Hello and welcome to the TikTok Workshop and today we're going to be building this Rokor Pendulum Clock or Rokor Pendulum Clock, I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. This may look complicated but if you've ever finished a decent sized Lego kit, Airfix model or you struggle to understand why people have so much trouble putting flat pack furniture together, you'll be fine here. This is a laser cut plywood model which doesn't require any glue to complete. The only things you're going to need are a thin blade like a scalpel blade or hobby knife. Plus I'd recommend making yourself a little sanding stick by gluing a bit of sandpaper to a flat piece of wood. Here I've used a bit of super glue and a flat lollipop stick, then I've trimmed off the excess sandpaper with the knife. Okay you got me, I used a bit of glue but that's the only time I used some glue even though I really wanted to use glue during this build but we're going to stick to the plans and we're going to build it the way the instructions tell us to build it apart from that little sanding stick. Inside the box we've got five laser cut sheets of parts. Generally all of the A parts are on one board, all of the B parts are on a second sheet and so on, however they've thrown in a couple of curve balls so watch out for the odd B part on the E board etc. We've got the assembly instructions. The diagrams are clear and I wasn't left scratching my head at any point so they get a thumbs up. And we've got a box full of all of the extra parts that we're going to need to complete the build. To get the parts out cleanly, I find each point where the part is attached to the frame, I take my knife and I cut through the top layer of plywood and repeat this top and bottom. The part should piss out nice and easily and you greatly reduce the risk of any chips or splintering by doing things this way. Finally, take your sanding stick and remove this final splinter of wood. Don't go do lally here, you don't want to sand a groove into your parts. The first thing we get to make is a jig. This is the first thing that I really wanted to glue together but I didn't need to in the end. We'll be making a few of these throughout the build and they're used for correctly positioning these little orange spacers onto these steel rods. This little tool that I'm using comes in the kit. The steel rod and spacers hold the wheels in the frame. If the spacers are in the wrong position the wheels won't line up properly so always make sure that you're using the right jig. The first wheel that we build contains the mechanism for winding the spring. There are two different size holes in the front of these gears so make sure that you line everything up correctly before pushing the pegs in. The ratchet wheel and the pin go in next. The arrows on the gear and the arrows on the ratchet wheel should be pointed in the same direction. Snap on the front cover and then give everything a quick inspection to make sure that there aren't any gaps anywhere. On to the next wheel. We start off by getting the first of the four spacers onto the steel bar. Line up the first two gears over the top of each other. Here was one of the places where I really wanted to use some glue and glue these two halves together. But we're sticking to the plan so we're not going to do that. Then we place that wheel onto the steel rod and back into the jig. We push on a second spacer to secure the wheel and finish it up with a different jig to place on the last two spacers. Hopefully you should end up with something that looks like the picture in the assembly manual. Every other wheel goes together using the same technique and you'll also notice that every wheel has a different spoke pattern. This makes it nice and easy to identify them later when we're assembling the wheels into the frames. The escape wheel, this fella with the funky teeth, needs a bit of wax on it for lubrication. I didn't get the little block of wax that was supposed to come with the kit and my block of wax was way too big for the job. So I cut a bit of pegwood at an angle and used it to add a bit of wax to each of the teeth and get a nice even covering. For the next step we're going to be attaching a wheel to the frame. This time when we push the spacers on we're going to be using this little transparent plastic shim. When all the spacers have been pushed on give the transparent shim a bit of a tug and it should pop right off. This will create a bit of space between the frame and the wheel allowing it to spin freely. This ring, which will indicate the hour, is then attached using a couple of short pins and some spacers. Onto the pendulum. 
The top of the pendulum is built up similarly to the wheels. The top fork needs some wax where it contacts the escape wheel. The bottom of the pendulum has a weight that can be adjusted up and down. We drop in the nut, then the weight, then push in these two little springs. Once you've closed everything up, you can put the screws into the pendulum. Winding the screw will raise the weight and speed up the clock. So I set mine about halfway and fine tuned it later. Next, these bits of frames now peg together and then we end up with the complete front face of the clock. The other part of the frame that needs assembly goes together in the same way. Right, here comes the fiddly bit. We start off by attaching two parts of the frame together. I, genius that I am, forgot to record the building of this next part. This thing, which I've decided to call a Dougalberry, adds support to the top of the frames, and we have two of these to build. The Dougalberries need a bit of care as you can easily damage the plywood when you push these wooden dowels in. Placing a scrap piece of wood behind the hole will help protect the surface layer of ply, and will also ensure that you don't push them too far forcing you to grab a flat piece of wood to push them back again. We're going to insert the wheels into place by prying the two halves of the frame apart and then sliding the wheels in. Make sure that you don't move any of the spacers while you're doing this. We build up the gears, making sure that everything is aligned properly and moving freely. Next, we're putting in the mainspring. One end of the spring hooks onto the frame and the central end of the spring goes into this split pin coming off the back of the ratchet wheel. I attach the ratchet wheel to the front frame using the key. I then attach the spring to the ratchet wheel and brought the frames together, lined everything up, hooked the spring into the frame and then pushed the two frames home. Squeeze in the last couple of wheels and add in the last couple of supports and we're ready for a bit of testing. As if things were gonna be that easy. I must have been particularly terrible at this, as every time I tried to get a wheel in, another would pop out. But finally, I managed to get them all in. So if you double check that everything is aligned and running freely, give the clock a bit of a wind. Wind slowly and stop as soon as the wheels start moving. Check that everything is hunky-dory, and if you're happy that everything is running true, then add in the pendulum. And here I've mucked up the spacers. So this had to come out and was reassembled correctly. And there we have it, one finished cock. Although we're not finished, we've got to get her ticking correctly. The first thing we have to do is get the clock in beat. That means that the ticks and the tocks need to be equal. There's no adjustment available on the clock, so we're gonna be doing this by sticking things underneath the feet. Watch the pendulum and listen out for the tick that takes the longest. You can see that the pendulum is on this side of the clock for the long tick. This is the side that you need to shim up. Just tear up some cardboard to begin with and stick it under the feet until you've got a nice even beat going. At this point my clock would run for about 30 seconds and then stop. So I hit the escapement with a hairdryer to try and soften up the wax a bit. My thinking was it would help the wax spread out a bit more evenly over the teeth. I added a bit more wax in places that needed it and within half an hour I had the clock running. For about half an hour at a time and then it would stop. However, after a week of being wound up every day the clock found its stride and it will happily tick along for five to six hours at a time now. You can adjust the speed of the clock with the screw at the bottom of the pendulum but I didn't bother with this because it's not a great clock. It only runs for quarter of a day to begin with, but it's a fantastic model of a clock and I think it does an awesome job of showing off the beauty of a mechanical timepiece. 
So if you've enjoyed this video and want to see me try and pass my watch and clock servicing exams, hit the subscribe button and keep an eye out for my next video where I'm going to try and open up this clock to see what I can learn. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next episode.